This week on The Job, we welcome Bill from Rainmakers for Contractors. Bill owns and runs a marketing company that especially helps foundation and waterproofing companies create awesome strategies to help deliver leads. In this episode, Bill dives into what it takes to really have a great strategy, not just delivering a lead, but following up on a lead and how to make sure that lead closes. This episode is perfect if you're at a point where you know you need to be implementing new marketing into your business. On the Job is an ArcSight Media production. ArcSight is the fastest growing 2D CAD application on the market. With ArcSight, it makes it easy to create professional CAD floor plans from anywhere. The best part is you don't need years of experience to use ArcSight. In just minutes, you can create impressive site drawings that will help impress your customers, close more deals, and beat your competition. That's not all. ArcSight offers takeoff and estimate features that will help you close deals on the spot. All you have to do is load in your company's products into the app, drag them into your site drawings, and ArcSight automatically calculates your proposal based on the items you added to the drawing. It's that easy. Learn more today at arcsightapp.com slash on the job, or head to the Apple App Store and start a 14-day trial today. All right. So we are live here. I have Bill with me today. Bill, first of all, thank you so much for taking some time to meet with me. I know you're got to be a busy guy. Um, you're with Rainmakers for Contractors. And, you know, first of all, thanks. And then second of all, can you just maybe quick background, you know, a little bit about yourself and what you do, what your company does. Um, Absolutely. Thanks, Larry, for having me. I'm excited uh to be part of your podcast. It's awesome. (laughs) Thanks, man. So Rainmaker for Contractors, we do internet marketing for contractors. And we're kind of a, you know, I I was in the trades myself. I owned a waterproofing company for 15 years. Okay. uh, I know our contractor thinks so we do everything, you know, from the websites, Google ads, local SEO, social, you name it, we do it. Contractor doesn't have to worry about like, figuring one thing out for themselves. And uh, we're kind of a one-stop shop. Yeah. So, you know, while you're on that note, we, you said something interesting when we were first talking and it was, you know, people are reaching out to you probably at that point where they're sick of doing it themselves. So, you know, what does that look like for someone maybe right before they're, you know, before they're searching for Bill, what is their life looking like? You know, oh, if, to yeah. me, it's probably like they're, they're managing too many things and, you know, it's one thing just being a boss, but then to be your own marketing department on top of that, that can't be easy. Oh, I know that, you know, when you're a small business, you, you got to wear every single hat. It's just right. always, and I, I get it, you know, uh, I've been there. And so I have a lot of respect for people that are just trying to make it happen. Um, but sure, it's very common that someone reaches a point where they, they have their backlog, they have some employees, some of the pieces are starting to get in place. And they're like, ah, I need to find a company that I could trust. Um, so, you know, we have a fair amount of those that we're getting. And then we also have our typical customer is the one that's kind of already been through, you know, two, three or four different agencies. <laughs> but <laughs> when you're talking about that, that person that's the first hire, they're usually good at like, say, the website or social media, sure. or they have their nephew in high school doing like a certain piece. Of it. And, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's all good. Sometimes they want to they want to hold on to something that is going well. And that's fine. Um, but yeah, they're usually I uh, have a little bit of money now and kind of sticking the toes in the water, like, what's this cost? How's it work? And so that's, that's cool. I'm excited for them. They're they're in the growth stage. Yeah, that's great. Well, I'm curious how many people that you talk to or work with, do they, are they, are they like that? Just like one man trying to do everything or do they have a small marketing team already? And they're, you're an extension of that team, or I'm sure it's maybe a little of both, but, um, so, you know, and then you know, sorry, not to cut you off, but no, when ahead. you answer that too, is there a size or something where you would maybe like tell someone, Hey, maybe you're not ready for us. And maybe you should just get a marketing guy. Is that ever the case? Usually not <laughs> okay. because um, it's way cheaper to hire an agency than mm. to have a, like a marketing guy, you know, yeah. like a full-time employee or even, you know, part-time because that stuff adds up, especially like us, you know, we specialize in like our niche is based on waterproofing foundation repair. So we really stripped down. I was talking to someone, um, I was talking to someone last week and they had like, there was multiple owners and they own half of the site. And so it it kind of was complicated. And the other, there's like a Mm -hmm. marketing team 
And I said, this isn't a great fit for us. And it's not a good uh, spend for you either, because this feels like a lot of like um, handholding, customization, getting approval from another team that doesn't know us or trust us. <laughs> sure. And we're not going to be positioned to like to come in and do what we do best and like, you know, blow wind into your sails and start sending you out in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> um, so we get stuff like that. But if someone has someone that like, they just say, hey, you know, we do, we feel really good about our social. We want to do that. You know, that's cool. No problem. We, we come alongside. Um, it's, you know, it's uh, for the company that's just hiring their first marketing agency. It's almost always they're in growth mode. They've been thinking about this for like probably since they started. Like, I so want to hand this off because <laughs> right. so many ads. In the the um, and it's never done too. You know, I, I work on the marketing nice. team here, and you know, I could work eighty hours a week and still, you know, there's always <laughs> there's always something else to work on. So imagine that while running your own business, like obviously <laughs> it gets exhausting. I can't, it, but I'll tell you, there is that. There's one piece of this that it comes up, and I'm like, <laughs> and I got a probe here, and that is that owner that is that they run their own leads, they're overseeing the jobs, and they're taking their calls. And I know when they're in the basement, they're not answering the phone. Mm. And the customer is just going to go to the next one, the next one. They're not going to want to deal with someone that they, on a sales call, that they have to leave a message and hope that someone gets back. You know, and they'll also be like, oh, I, you know, I call them as soon as I can and I usually get them. It's like, I don't want to take your money and you're going to be <laughs> buying leads, expensive leads, and you're not even going to answer the phone. Like that, yeah. that doesn't work, you know? Man. Or if they have a, uh, you know, if they have a bad website, we just got to tell them, right? Um, if it's not going to convert leads, like it, it's got to be, you can, you don't want web visits, right? You want the phone to ring so you can get into the home. So that's what it's all about. So don't spend money on a website that's not going to get you leads. That's a, a huge point. Um, you know, I don't want to skip too far ahead, but I, I'd love talking about websites. And, and you know, I see, you know, hundreds of different, you know, people converting on, on our website. Uh, and then I like to explore their websites because it's cool to see, you know, different people's websites. That's what I do for a living. So I love scoping them out. Um, and, and something I notice is just people who, you know, would stop the work. Like they don't realize that, you know, your website is not a one and done sort of thing. And even though you're a construction industry, you're not a technology business where, you know, you have a guy who does the website 24 seven and you're just constantly optimizing you still got to, you know, work on it. And uh, what do you say, or, or how do you help people who, you know, like you just said, they, you, you, you they want to work with you, but you're like, Oh man, what, what is this? Uh, <laughs> 1999 WordPress template. I, you know, like, you just gotta tell them, Cause I'm not into uh, like trying to sell someone. And then in like three months, you're like, this isn't working the way I thought. And it's like, yeah, it's cause your website, you know, we tell, <laughs> so I'll just, you know, we'll just say like, Hey, you know, we can work with you, but you're going to need to agree that we're going to make some changes to your website. And so do you guys do that? Do you guys do any web design or you work absolutely. with? Absolutely. Cool. We do quite a few websites. Yeah. And sometimes, sometimes, you know, you could just make changes like, um, yeah, that's it. You know, if you do a website guy, you like, you know, this, you could sometimes change the colors, change the font, change the pictures around is the homepage. And you know, like could, you could drastically change it without getting a new site. Mm -hmm. Other times, it's not mobile friendly. It's just an old template. And <laughs> sure. Uh, keep up with the technology. When it's hard coded by someone's grandson. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, right. It's on, it's on GoDaddy, right? Right. Website tonight. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, or Wix, you know, that, oh, those boy. are hard to deal with. Right? <laughs> it still has a Wix banner on top. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh, they, they get pricey. So, you know, when we sell a website, we typically say, you know, the website's going to take you three to five years. And what what's going on is the technology behind it changes so fast. True, true. If, uh, you, know, you know, you get a good template and a lot of times they'll keep up with technology as best they can. We like to put things on WordPress. Most everyone in our industry uses WordPress. Sure. It's, yeah, it's uh, well known. It's easy to use. Yeah. Sure. Millions um, of plugins for free. You can just plug right in. Absolutely. So let's talk to that guy who's, you know, maybe red in the cheeks right now listening, saying, you know, we're, we're not, you know, judging by any means, like any, any, everyone's website could be better. That's just a fact. For sure. So what about that guy? What can he do today? If you had just maybe one or two, you know, must haves for that website, mm -hmm. if you could, I mean, obviously, you know, where to start, where to end, but if you could think of two, like, Hey, if you don't have this on your website right now, please spend Monday, Monday morning, getting this ready and doing it. 
That's hard, man. You're boxing me in with the one or two, right? I, all right. So while you're thinking, you know, the first <laughs> thing that comes to mind for me is just, um, I like a clear call to action in the yes. navigation bar and whether you talk to most of your leads via the phone or via email, whatever it is, make sure that it's very clear because especially in these service industries, like people aren't often really shopping around via your website, obviously the bigger ticket ones they are, but they're probably comparing you and 10 other people right now. So if you oh, don't have a yeah, if you don't have your number or something clear to be considered, then you're going to just miss out. <laughs> yeah, so I, you know, I'm on, I'm with you. I'm on the same page. I, I like it top right. I like bold phone number. There you go. Yep. Don't make me work for it. it. Don't make it hide and seek where I got to click this and click that. Um, you know, but to me, it really is like I, I think our brains are just like subconsciously we're just clicking. We're like almost instantly. Is this the kind of company that I want to deal with? Mm. If it's a data website, I got to tell you my quick story. And I quite honestly Please. don't think I've ever shared this publicly, but oh, I'm, I'm the, excited. Um, <laughs> the Basement Health Association board for like 12 years. Okay. And I think it was, I think it was last year I was tasked with uh, Andre Lacroix from Easy Breathe to find a new management company, right? So we put a request for proposal out there to this one website okay. that manages um, these nonprofit associations. And we got about 25 companies that wanted to be, you know, hired or at least certainly considered to manage the Basement Health Association. So, you know, we're volunteers and we don't have tons of time and we're not going to interview 25 companies. So what <laughs> we did is we took those 25, we did a screen share. And in probably 40 minutes, we eliminated at least 15. <laughs> and sometimes it was just like, nope, gone on. So what were some of those things that were like disqualified immediately? <laughs> sure. Can you think like, of it? Uh, I remember one had, um, you know, the, they're a nonprofit management company. Great. But he also does like, you could hire him for singing performances. Like, <laughs> okay. No, <I'm> <laughs> um, any kind of like ma and pa stuff. Where, okay. You know, nope. Um, anyone like stock photos, they mm. were kind of trying to, you know, like they show the boardroom with, a, you know, politically correct diversity of their <laughs> team and, the, and like, no, like, cause we want to say, who are these people? I think that's huge. You know, if you don't mind us talking about that for real quick, it's just, it's not hard to take out your phone and take a picture of the team at work. Like if you have put in that work to build like, you know, a team or a family, whatever you want to call it at your place, people like to see that. They really do. I think the about us page, like, you know, I'm totally flipping to like a technology thing. So I used to work at like a SaaS business tech agency where we did websites and the most overlooked site was the about us. But Mm -hmm. when you think about it, if you're dealing with a tech company and you don't see that there's like a friendly team of people behind it, you're immediately thinking like, well, this is just like, you know, developed overseas and it's just a quick cash grab and it's not going to be here tomorrow. I'm going to sign up and it's gone. The same thing kind of is the, it's, you know, for these people too, it's, it's show off your friends and family, you know, it's even if it's not a professional picture too. Real pictures, right? Like you and your staff and especially the jobs maybe before and after. I mean, you could really take it right. And you, you, you want to, right now you're asking me questions about like that newer person. They're not going to probably develop case studies, Mm. but you know, really don't, don't try to be the big box company if you're not, because people will sniff that out. Yeah. So, yeah, I can go on and on about websites. I can talk forever about that one. Of course. <laughs> uh, that You know, that, I got to tell you, that experience, um, it really helped me see things differently. And, uh, you know, some more things are like credentials. Um, mm. And I do encourage people to join associations and get your awards. I love the Angie's List Award, the Home Advisor. Home Advisor gives you like five or six. Oh, Those cool. are fairly easy to get. Um, That's some great advice. Can you talk about that for a second? So, you know, and and then showcase that that on your website too, right? So instant social proof, right? Even if you don't have the reviews, you have that. Like above the fold in a Uh cool way. And that's really good. If you have a company that's been around a long time, I love putting like since, you know, Mm -hmm. X, Y, that that date, if it's older, because how many fly-by-night contractors are there or people that change all the time? So that's a good thing. But people, so I, I like to, when I'm talking to a contractor, I really like to push them and to say, you know, would you hire you? Like, if you didn't know anything about your industry, let's look at 10 sites right now. Like, why would they bother calling you? Like, That's what great. edge do you have? 
And in the olden days, you know, you get three estimates and you get the contractor out. And you're like, I really like that guy. And then the price is, you know, it's not like that anymore. I, mm-hmm. I was at Google headquarters like seven years ago and they showed us, they said, we have data that people are now checking you out before they're making the phone call. Now, this was years ago. And it's like, well, are we more cynical now? And the conclusion was, no, it's not because we're more cynical. It's because it's just so easy. It's one click away. <laughs> yeah. One click away. And why why not do that extra effort to check them out before mm-hmm. you bother calling them? So that's what it's about. So you got to have a you know, nice online reputation. You know, we can talk about reviews a lot too. I think reviews are absolutely sure. critical. And it's something that uh, smaller companies can really excel in. They don't need to have, you know, 100 jobs a month to have reviews. If if they work the system, they could get a lot of reviews and that's going to affect, I mean, you can put them on your website, but you put them on your Google, Google, my business listing and, you know, Facebook and anywhere else that you can get a review. And suddenly you're a small company and now you're starting to have reviews online and it looks really good. Yeah. It it really, it's a, you know, I'm going to use the word social proof again, because it's, I, I like reviews a lot, especially in this industry. The second you see someone who has, you know, more than someone else, they're on your list of who you're going to call, right? You're, right? I mean, well, obviously, if all these people have used these guys and left a review, something had to have gone right. So right. do you have any strategies that you implement? Like, do you always incentivize a review? I, I talked to one guy recently and he said, I never incentivize it because I want authentic real reviews. So like he'll only go after jobs that are well done, which is great, but it probably takes a little longer. Um, but, but what do you have for like strategies to get more reviews? Oh man, here's another hour, but I'll do it. (laughs) Oh God. Okay. Right. Yeah. So I really think it, it, I love the word culture, right? Like it has to be Mm -hmm. part of the culture and the values within the company. And it could, for some companies, it starts with the estimate call. Like they know the second, like how long does it ring before? And it, you know, it goes on from there. I heard one company say, you know, on the estimate call, if we do a good job, if we do an outstanding job for you, are you willing to put a five-star review on Google? Mm. Now that's before like everything's really even booked and way before the rep is out there. But then, um, you know, I really believe if you don't do it on an estimate call, which that's pushing it, I understand, but I definitely believe it needs to be part of the sales presentation. And okay. you, you show your reviews. And if you don't have any, you could say like, hey, we're young. You know, be honest with them. We're young. We're starting out. We, it's really important that we we get great five-star reviews. So we're going to do everything we can to make you super happy. You have that assurance at the end of the job. And, and in addition to paying us for our, our work, are you willing to post a, a good review? And then, you know, when you start the job, um, bring it up. The foreman, when they do the walk around on the inside and the outside and said, yeah, payment's very important, but you know what else we're really looking for? It's a, it's a mm-hmm. five-star review from Google. And then you could touch base on that if it's like, let's say, a, you know, a three-day job, touch base on But then you got to bring it up at the end. And I would suggest, you know, don't like, all right, bring the paperwork back to the office. And some companies are like, oh yeah, like once a month, we just kind of go through and send an email out. And now we're like, you have to ask the question, like when is the customer happiest in the entire life cycle of interacting with them. It's usually right when you finish. Right the after. Yeah, that'd be my That's guess. That's when, you know, and I also, I also tell our, our contractors to use the law of reciprocity and that is, you know, over deliver, do something mm. special. I, I like when the production manager asks the, the, the foreman to say like, Hey, what did you do for the customer that was above and beyond that they didn't expect? And in every job that foreman should do find that one thing, you know, maybe it's um, drag the bushes to the, to the curb, or maybe it's replacing their concrete sink and putting a $50 sink in there from Home Depot and it looks amazing here to try to find something for them. So then when you like over deliver and you're like, man, these guys were amazing. I wish I could just stay here and do work on my house. And then when (laughs) you ask them for review, then they get back. The other thing I teach is um, whenever they have staff meetings, or even if it's one other person and they're trying to have some order, start those meetings out with a review that came in in the last week. And if you have a little bit bigger staff, um, you know, read the review and say, hey, Sue, you booked this lead. Nice job. Uh, Mike, you sold this job. And then Chuck, you installed it. So every, every person on this team touched this job. And let me read you the review. That's ABC that's one. great sales management too. Yes. What, what a great tip just for, you know, recognizing your employees. You know, that's the smallest thing that you can do if you're an owner or a manager to help your guys do a better job is make for them sure. feel like they're doing a good job. It's for that sure. easy sometimes. I, I like to put goals on the door. Like if you have two reviews, you know, do you think you can get to like seven by the mm-hmm. end of the month? 
right? And then tell them and post it. Like if we get seven reviews, I'm taking you out to lunch. Like yes. put it out there and then check in. How are we doing? How are we doing? I really want to get the, let them pick their award. Say the, the goal is like, uh, we have a $250 budget, you know, and we're going to spend it. I don't care what we spend it on. You guys tell me, you decide, and then we'll go to, uh, we'll play golf somewhere or something. That's cool. So yeah, I kind of get that involvement. And uh, you know, you could put these on the wall, you get them blown up, put the testimonials on the wall. If, if you have an office, a lot of people are doing, you know, remote offices. These right, days. right. So a lot of different strategies, but it's really got to be part of the culture. It's something that you value. It's every employee needs to know that that online reputation creates the, um, it relates to the number of leads that are coming into the company. It's huge. It's critical. Yeah. It affects your rankings in the, in the Google listing that you have. It's absolutely critical. What, one little tip about reviews, which sure. a lot of people don't apply, is when that customer is filling out a review, if they can put the service that was done in the review, <laughs> and especially the town, like those little, Google looks at that stuff. And yes, you and I would say like, well, that guy's got 50 reviews and this one has 10. I'm definitely calling with the 50. But for rankings, those little service taglines, keywords in the review, that could be the difference of you ranking a little bit higher than the next person. That's huge too. And I, I, if you don't mind, let's talk about that for a second is this is something you could do today. If you don't already have it, go out and do it. You know, maybe if you don't have reviews and you don't have your Google, uh, Google, my business set up, just go and do it. It'll take, you know, maybe a half hour. Again, this is another great opportunity to put up some awesome photos of you and your team and the jobs that you've done, even if you don't have the reviews, but maybe you've had you know, a picture you took at the end of each job, you can add that. And that stuff helps you show up when people type in, you know, foundation company in Grand Rapids, Michigan. That's where I'm from. So if I were to type that nice. in, the people who have that written in there, that's, you know, who's going to show up. Google's not that tricky. You know, there's all these SEO gurus and stuff out there. But the truth of the matter is, Everything Google's doing lately is shifting to like, you know, I, I'm almost saying like dumb it down, but it's simplified. So if, if you really just like have like what you said is huge. These guys did a great job fixing my foundation. That means when you say people to help me, you type in, you're looking for foundation help. That review is going to help you as a company show up for me, Larry, who's looking for a uh, Grand Rapids Foundation Cup. That's right. That's right. They did great foundation work in Grand Rapids. Now foundation work in Grand Rapids, like, wow, here's a review. Google was like, cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and do you have any, you know, I, I barely scraped the service I, and I'm, I'm no, not really um, super knowledgeable on, on the Google, my business stuff so much, you know, I, I set it up and then kind of forget it. But what, what are your strategies to maintain that? Do you have any, any good nuggets on that? Or, you know, is it just make sure you have it and then keep an eye on it? So great question. Really good question. I think there's a lot of myths that relate to Google My Business. Okay. Um, some people do think, you know, the more like Google posts that you put into that, into your Google My Business, the higher it's going to rank. Um, that That's that's a myth. Um, here's another, you know, there's a, the coverage area, like you could put your coverage area in. Uh, some people think if you put a bigger coverage area, it's going to help you rank outside of your immediate area. You know, that's not true either. Um, so they, with Google, my business, setting it up is huge. Um, mm -hmm. it, that, that thing about like adding stuff, like adding photos, adding posts, uh, you have a, a spot now for a coupon. Those things don't help. They don't affect your ranking, but what they do do is they make your Google, my business profile a lot more engaging. Yes, there you go. If you have that, then you know that people, uh, like Google always sends you like emails. Hey, like 420 people looked at your pictures, right? And like 59 looked for, got your directions to your website, all this stuff. And so the more stuff that you add, the more engaging it is. On a basic level though, this is an important one. Um, oh, here's, here's another myth. So categories are huge, like just okay. gigantic, huge. In, in our space, the contractor space, sometimes people will put uh, general contractor and they shouldn't do that. <laughs> okay. They need to find exactly what category they should be in. And that needs to be their primary. Uh, Google allows you to have nine secondary categories and you need to use uh, only the ones that are relevant. Mm -hmm. But you're, 
leaving low hanging fruit on the table by not putting those extra categories in that relate to your business. You know, yeah. you never want, if you're not a plumber, don't put plumber, right? You, you, <laughs> you know, that's, it's going to hurt. But some people think, you know, the third myth is if I put too many categories in, it's going to cause delusion and, and it's going to just going to like not have relevance. I'm too spread thin. And that's not true. Mm-hmm. If your services are on your website and in your Google, my business listing, you have relevant categories and it matches that's just, then those are all free leads. You know, like yeah. we, most of our customers are also doing uh, Google ads and Google ads are expensive. You know, when I get some, are they ever? <laughs> kind of, um, I kind of discourage them, like unless they're, I know they're big, but I kind of try to discourage them away from Google ads because I mean, from an agency's perspective, like we all know if you want leads fast for, for a customer, you know, you want to do paid ads, whether it's Google ads or Facebook ads, that's just yeah. how it, you always want to get a quick result for the customer to make them happy. Right. But um, if they're thinking like, Oh yeah, I really want to compete now in Google ads. It's like, well, all right. Like, do you know how competitive it is? Right. You know, your, your customer, sorry, your competition is spending, you know, five, sometimes 10 grand. And you're like, cool. I think I have, I think I have $1,200 a month in my budget that I can, it's like, I hear you. And, you know, we could, probably come up with some kind of a plan, but I always wanted to, I want to explore like, um, you know, is home advisor. I, I mean, are you really good at following up and having a good sales rep that you can close? Cause then home advisor might be good. I got a call last week. It was last Friday. It was a painting contractor and they, it was this, it was like, we're ready for Google ads. We've been mm-hmm. in business for 30 years. We're taking a step. We want, you know, Google ads, Google ads. And I rarely do I ever do this, but I just wanted to explore. I'm like, well, have you could, do you, do you know anything about Yelp reviews? Like, do you have any? Do you, she's like, I don't know anything about Yelp. I don't even know if we have a profile. I don't know if we have reviews. She had 11 reviews on Yelp in the 4.5 out okay. of five, which like you and I know, like that's amazing. Pretty you, good, yeah. <laughs> I mean, people have the reviews, but they screen them. They, they filter them and they're on the bottom of the uh, Yelp's not showing them. So I'm like, you know, your profile is so good on Yelp call Yelp and see if you could spend, you know, three, $400 a month on ads and see what happens with that before mm-hmm. we start dropping two to three grand on Google ads. She's like, Oh my gosh, I didn't even know I had a Yelp profile. And I'm like, well, you <laughs> got to claim it first because it's out there, but they had good reviews. You know, it's worth trying. So I kind of try to customize it to where the contractor's at and everyone's got strength and weakness. Like, I don't think there's like, yeah, everyone needs to go to Google ads because that you could just pitch. I mean, they're masters at sucking money off your credit card and they don't really care. And you're not yeah. going to call them and say like, can you refund my credit? I mean, it's not going to happen. They're <laughs> not going to give you the time of the day. So I, I mean, I, when I was, you know, I, I just set us up, we're, we're doing Google displayed network right now. I just built it this week. So it's fresh in my head. And, um, the, the search clicks for, because we I was typing some foundation keywords in there and some of them were upwards of like six or $7 a click. So if you're trying to do search on some of these words, it's like, like oh, you said, awesome. it'll bleed you. It's a waterproofing at like 30 to $50 a click. Oh baby. That's, that's yeah. huge. Like if you can get it for six, like man, jump at it. Yeah. I guess I, mine was oh. nothing. <laughs> but you know, it's different though. You did, you did say display to be fair. You know, search is the expensive one. Display is like, you know, it's a disruptive advertising. Yeah. For your ad at the time. And, you know, that would be my advice for some of these guys listening right now is honestly like Facebook ads and that kind of stuff is a lot harder in my opinion, because most of these businesses are a like rare need then you're calling, right? So it's not something that sparks your attention and you're going to join the waiting list for like, someday I'll need foundation repair. I better follow these guys, right? Like you, I've, I've never done that. I don't know if you are. Oh, so. I know what you mean. No, no one's joining a waiting list. I totally agree with you. <laughs> but I would say though that uh, I think one of the trends is that Facebook and Google artificial intelligence is just like so game on. It's only going to get better. And so... I, I kind of do like, I will sometimes encourage people um, with low budgets to do Facebook. People with big budgets, they absolutely need to be on Facebook because mm-hmm. you could spend like a 10th of the money. Now, you know, you and I know it's going to be a lower quality lead, but if you could filter through those and if they're coming in at $30 a lead versus say, you know, a hundred to $150 a lead, 
I'll take several $30 a lead and see if <laughs> okay. I can find them. But Facebook's going to figure out if these people are kind of in the market. They're going to show those ads. I, you I like you can it. still now, and it was better before, but I don't know if, about you. I, maybe you have more insight than I do, but I, everything I'm seeing is less and less of that being allowed. I know when you add a lot of context to your ad, that's your number one friend. So if you, you know, add in the keywords that you're looking for, you can let Facebook's, you know, creepy brain go out and find the right people for you. He's so th- there's a tip. So creepy. He's <laughs> creepier until they called Zuckerberg in front of Congress. And he exactly. Questions he could answer. Like that was weird, man. You could you found out if people were making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, <laughs> everything. Yeah, they dialed that back, so we can't target as as much as we used to be able to, like three, four years ago. Exactly, that's one thing I've seen, and I know there's, you know, if any ad nerds are listening, the the whole iOS 14 that's coming out. There's a bunch of news around that where you'll lose even less, even. You lose even more targeting, um, but there'll always be ways around, like you said, and 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 like you said, if it's you know throwing a couple extra, you know, a, a little bit bigger of a net out there to get some cheaper leads, you know, and if you have the budget, go for it. For sure. um, what about for you know? Google search comes to mind, Yelp. I want more. Do you have a couple more that you could recommend that are maybe out of the box? Like you said, like Yelp was something I would have never suggested in a million years. I, it's such a creative I, you know, idea. I typically want, and I tell people don't ever uh, advertise on Yelp unless you already have, um, you know, at least five reviews that are like maybe 4.0 or higher because, you know, most contractors, uh, although they have good reviews in there, Yelp's going to filter them. And so they're only showing you like the horrible reviews. And so most contractors have like a one, two or three. So if you do a search for an industry in a certain area and like you're coming up 4.0 or or higher, it's like, wow, these people look really good. And then you start getting momentum because Yelpers are very loyal. So they'll practically hire you before you get in the door. But you know, that is, that is a rare story. It's not a common story. So I typically like to explore home advisor with them. I do like to, I always want to find out like what they did in the past and what worked for them and what didn't work and why didn't it work. Interesting thing about home advisor, I'd say 70% of the time, you know, contractors are like, oh, I hate them. You know, they're selling that lead to like four or five people. Mm. They kind of need to know the game and how it works. And once I educate them on, on how it works, like in my space, I know um, four contractors now that, if, that I mean, year it's kind of, I could say year after year, because they've done it at least two years, maybe three years. They've done 2 million net in basement waterproofing sales just oh, wow. from Home Advisor. So when they hear that, they're like, wait, what? Like, how is that even possible? And then it's like, well, what are they doing differently? And it's like, well, I can tell you some things that they're doing differently, but you know, you got to be on that lead. Like you got to be all over that lead. A lot of it's the sales process, right? Like you can have leads coming in all day, but if you don't have a great team to follow up and go out there and give them great service too, like, you know. Part of it's sales and part of it is like, you know, try to be the first one there. Sure. A lot of reps are like, well, I'd rather be the third one there. Well, if you want to be the third one there, you're not going to get the lead because they're going to be sold by then. Right. Oh, man. Um, so I, I we're, we're getting a little bit here close on time. I just have one more quick thing I wanted to touch on if you For don't sure. mind. Okay, great. Absolutely. Um, so one thing I, I love talking about during these, um, I think my mic just cut out. So I apologize if the audio. I can hear you. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, good. Um, the last thing I, I'm very curious about is like the whole age of content, you know, um, you know, we're making some right now for, for, you know, it's value-based content. But, but from what I've seen is it's harder for, you know, these service-based people to create content for their audience. And, you know, it is the way that they are top of mind when they have a service issue and they want to call someone. So it is valuable, but, you know, it's hard to do in my opinion. So have you seen, you know, a couple go-to content strategies work well for some of your customers or, um, you know, is time better spent doing other things in your opinion? Boy, I there's that one thing. One thing I learned a long time ago is when you ask a contractor for content, it ain't coming back. You know, <laughs> and even when they say like, "Oh, we'll do it," and actually, there's four people, and if we each wrote an article, you know, it just it ain't happening. So I don't think, from my experience, I don't think it's time well spent to ask a contractor to create content. Sure. Um, it's hard, you know, and because what do you do too? And then is that worth your time? Because it's like such, you know, I'm, I'm going to say uncharted territory almost, but it kind of is, you know, what does work well for these guys? Well, 
You know, you mentioned videos uh, kind of before we jumped on, and I like some videos. Um, you know, you could put them on your Google My Business listing, you could put them on YouTube channel, and you could mm-hmm. give that customer some that authenticity that they're wanting to say, like, here's who we are. Here's our crews. They have their yeah. uniforms. This is our work. You, know, you could do all those things. I wouldn't put a ton of time into that just because, uh, you know, put them on your website, get them out there. But that's about, you know, I just know these guys, they're running around with their head cut off. There's like yeah. 20 things that they're trying to do. As, as far as content, you, you, you need it on your website. You, you've got to have some good content on all your web pages, your services, and so on. Um, it's mostly that one-time push. And I haven't seen a contractor create blogs on a regular basis unless they're with an agency. Okay. So it's yeah. been done for sure somewhere. People are doing it. But generally speaking, you kind of wait until you get an agency and then they could really optimize that that content for the various towns and services you're trying to target. Yeah. So so let the pros do it. <laughs> um and then it's don't let it be a time consuming, you know, it there's is. too many things to follow up on. You know, my my one thing, and and you like you said, um, is video. I I don't think it's hard, and you don't have to be an editing wizard, really. Hell, I mean, we're on a Zoom call right now. Imagine if you were a client I just did, and maybe I gave you a fifty dollar discount to have a ten minute talk with me about how the service was. There's an idea right there that you know you could put on your Instagram, put on your website, and then people immediately could be like, oh wow, well this is a person who hired these guys. There's a quick easy sure. lead right there. So I, I think there are some creative ways I've seen, you know, as of lately. So, you know, on one hand, like, yes, I totally get like, you know, how do we get these guys who have a million other things to do it, but maybe even just, you know, enable a sales guy to do one review a month or something like, um, just see what happens. <laughs> I, I can't say I've seen it yeah. happen yet. So, you know, I, I don't have any uh, data to back what I'm saying, but, you know, I feel like the technology is there and it's really not hard to do. Um, so, you know, try something. <laughs> For sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, So, I mean, other than that, is there anything else you want to talk about today, Bill? Oh man, where do we start? Let's see if we get reviews. We we could probably talk for hours. I mean, I'm having, you know, I'll throw one or two more things out that I think are really important. I think they're becoming, so, I mean, Google usually doesn't tell you the answers, but I'll tell you, uh, web speed matters now. Like Mm. you need a fast loading website. Um, And the tool that we often use is that Google, it, page insights. Okay. And yeah. They'll tell you for desktop and they'll tell you for mobile and they'll tell you how to fix it if it doesn't load fast. And so you kind of need, there's, there's an aspect to local SEO and it's called uh, technical SEO, you know, and that's one of that is, um, is how fast your website loads and there's, you know, different hosting companies. There's the GoDaddy, Bluehost and uh, some of the basic ones. Um, And then you could pay a little bit more and get faster web service. So that matters. You got to pay attention to it. Mobile, like people don't realize half of their traffic is coming through mobile. So you really got to like, you have to pull your website up on your mobile and then make sure it's got that one click thing. Because again, you know, the goal is not pretty websites or web visits. It's phone calls. It's always phone calls. So do you have the bar on the bottom that says, you know, call us now and they can just hit it and call you. Make it easy for people to yeah. be able to get in touch with you. I almost want to take back what I said about my advice because I like that and I'm going to steal it. <laughs> I'm going to say <laughs> you, my advice would, if you had that one thing for your website, you know, even just hire a guy on like, there's like coding websites and stuff to just that's spend true. spend 50 bucks to get a mobile banner. Like you just said, man, that's such an easy home run way for, because if you're on your phone, you're probably ready to call too. So, or at least for you're sure. close to it. So I love that. That's great. You know, that's WordPress has free plugins for that. It's oh, well, there you go. You could do it yourself. <laughs> yeah. You know, I like chat on websites because okay, yeah. more and more people, they don't want to talk on phones. Right? I'll want- tell you what, just I, the last thing I booked was uh, we had our air vents all cleaned out and I, did the whole thing through their chat on their website. There you go. Boom. <laughs> right. <laughs> so they're probably going to put chat on your own website now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, it's, we're, I think the world has changed so fast, so quickly. We don't realize like this is there's so much here. Really mm-hmm. got to pay attention to that. Great if advice. You could, if you could um, set up your chat so that they're actually texting from their phone, mm. like that's really cool because then you capture their phone number. <clears throat> the other thing is, um, 
marketing automation is Ooh. is the prices come down on marketing automation and it's really all for small businesses. There's some cool things that you could have set up that are just really nice touches. Mm -hmm. um, like after a web form gets filled out, you know, sending them uh, an email saying, you know, thank you so much for this. And then another follow-up email, just make sure that they get in, in touch with you. Or yeah. like hanging up after they, like after every single phone call, like wait five minutes and then send a text and it will only go to mobile phones. But the mm -hmm. text will say something like, thank you so much for calling us. If there's anything we could help you in the future, here's our phone number. Now it kind of makes it handy if they ever need you or if they're, if it's an estimate call, they're going somewhere else. Or, wait, I got that text. I'm going to call these people back. Yeah. There's a lot of little things. Um, Can you recommend a couple? Um, you know, the ones I I use for that are like HubSpot and, and they're a little pricey, I think, for a lot of the people who are listening. But ha have you used some maybe more affordable marketing automation tools that you could recommend? I, gosh, I, you know, I do have a little bit of a bias. Um, I've been an Infusionsoft partner for eight years or so, which okay. is now called Keep, but they kept their mainline. Oh, software. yeah. You know, I've seen that all over the place. Yeah. That's pretty popular. But I haven't used it yet. It's kind of like a hub where there's like, you know, 500 companes that you could plug into Infusionsoft, like WordPress, okay. you know. So there's texting companies and so on. It's ah. a little bit, um, it could be a little bit time consuming. Um, I'm playing around with high level right now. And mm -hmm. high level has a lot of like kind of all in one things. The, the problem with technology in any company with Infusionsoft went down this road as well as it went that, you know, the second you call yourself, we're an all in one software, <laughs> like technology is just exploding and there's no way that you could support the platform for mm -hmm. everything. So you kind of need to create that ecosystem so people can plug into you. But, you know, the basic things like, um, email sequences, texting, um, even I like this ringless voicemail where you can oh. do a broadcast and you can leave a voicemail on someone's phone without it ringing. Oh, interesting. There's a voicemail and then they can play it. And that sounds a little devious, but I like it. <laughs> it's legal. Okay. Not, That's all that matters. Not many laws. There's laws around spamming emails and spamming texts. There's not any really around ringless voicemail right now. Okay. So there's another hot tip. There's <laughs> Love it. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was just a couple that I could think of too, that I wanted to mention is, Active campaign. Have you heard of that? Absolutely. That's another really cheap. It's not that cheap. It it it's does a lot too. There's they just added landing. That would be the third one I'd recommend. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. yeah. Very good. It's uh it's not as heavy as Infusionsoft. Mm -hmm. Actually, a lot of employees from Infusionsoft left and went to Active Campaign. Okay. Yeah. And it's getting better. They just got another round of funding. So yeah. uh, I, I've seen the app improve a lot, even from when I was using it. Um, so I, I like HubSpot and Active Campaign a lot. There's a learning curve with Active Campaign, I'd say. But if you learn that, that's skills that will be with you forever. And it's only going to help you, you know, make your business way better. Now, there's disadvantages of getting funding. Oh, okay. You no longer own the company. The VCs want a good oh. quarterly report and they don't care if they're going to gut the partner program or anything else. They want their, their money. They want their money back. Yeah. You know, and we invest in these companies and we're like, we want to return on our stocks. And it's just, you know, in America, this is how it works. So sometimes you have a company that you really like their value system and then they get funding and then suddenly, you know, Goldman Sachs is trying to maximize their profits and they don't really yeah. care how what they get that. So, um, you know, Salesforce is the bomb when it comes to, but that's, that could be heavy and they tried to simplify it to reach a broader audience. And then I would say HubSpot, um, HubSpot, there's a lot to it. Uh, you know, for our space, there's two that I like. Market Sharp is very popular. Okay. I've heard that left and right lately. I really have yeah. to learn more about them. 360 is um, okay. another one. You know, those two companies often sponsor, as well as uh, ArcSight, they often sponsor Basement Health Association. Yeah. So, and and I think ArcSight just, uh, you know, this might be a little premature, but is working on integrations with both of those apps you just mentioned too. Nice. So Very good. that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So there's a lot to, you know, but for a new guy, they don't need that or want that. Right. I mean, it's, there's too many things. There's, I, there's, there's a lot to choose from. They just got to like get leads and sell and build that backlog. And then they let the back end. If you can improve your systems as you go. Well put. And, and that comes back to what you said earlier. You can put all this money, all these resources into leads. But if you don't have the right people and the right systems in place to deal with the leads when they come in, then, you know, that money's going right down the drain. Yeah, that's right. Big time. That's right. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, Bill, it's been a pleasure to meet you and talk with you and, you know, learn, I learned so much and it's I feel like we had Larry. a great chat. Yeah, absolutely. It's been great. Um, any, any yeah. last minute words to, for our listeners before we end this here today, man, a lot of entrepreneurs out there, you know, keep hustling, keep I love working it. hard and jump in, uh, execute now, perfect later. Don't Ooh. get, don't try to like make everything perfect. And, um, as you get busy, you could figure out better systems and scale and so on. Execute now, perfect later might be my new, I'm going to get that a tattoo. <laughs> I, like, I like that a lot. <laughs> Good. Hey, thanks for having me, Larry. It was great. Anytime. Yeah, it was a pleasure talking to you, Bill. Thanks again. Take care. You too. That's it for On the Job this week. You can learn more at arcsiteapp.com slash on the job.